friends, hello everyone, welcome back to another Love 2D tutorial. So in the previous tutorial, we added thrusters to the player. So to give you an example, if I were to run the code we have, then now the player has a nice animated thruster, which is pretty neat. Now in this tutorial, we will be adding the game state. It's nothing you can really see, so I can't really show you an example of it in game. However, this will make our life in the future a lot easier because now we have something to manage the state of the game instead of us having to do it manually. So let's open up this main.lua. So we have it open. And let's actually just create the game state. So let's create a folder called states and inside of that a file called game.lua. Game.lua will contain our game state. Currently it will not really do anything but it will in the future do a lot. So we can say function game and then we can just return game. Then inside of here, we can just return. We have nothing else we need to really do. And we can just return a few things. First, I want to return all of the states we have in the game. This means we will have a menu state, which will code later, a paused state, which will code later, a running state and an ended state. And we'll code the ended state later as well. We already have the running state. So we need to define those states. So state, is equal to and then menu can be false paused can be false running for now can be true so it's going to be the default state and then ended which will then be false so these are our four states you can add more states later on as you please Thanks to this snippet of code here, it's not too difficult. Now what might become difficult is switching between states, such as saying, okay, we don't want the menu state anymore, we want this state. We want to switch to paused or to running state, and later on switching that state to the menu state. All of these things, they, they can be kind of difficult to implement. So we are going to take the easy way out and implement something that does all of that for us. So change game state is equal to a function and in the state we want to change to, so state. We can then go self.state.menu is equal to state and if that is equal to menu. So if the text menu is passed in, then we're switching to the menu state. And we can do this for all of the states we have. For example, pause, running, and ended. So here, one, two, or just one, two, three. And in here, one, two, three. Now there's probably a better way than to implement it with a string, but a string for our basic game is perfectly fine. As long as you don't misspell something, you'll be good to go, but you could give it a default state if none of these are true. But we're not going to worry about that. Now that we have this game state, let's add it to the game itself. So right here underneath player, we can add game is equal to game. And of course we need to import game. So local game is equal to require and as you may remember, it's inside of the states folder. So states, and we're going to go dot game, we can go slash game. This should import it into this project. Now we can go down. And here with the update, we can now implement some of this state checking. So if game dot state dot running then only we want to move the player 
So we can move that in there and we can move this to the top. So now we have that. So only if it's in the running state can we move the player. So if it's in the menu state or if it's in the paused state or the ended state, we cannot move the player. Then the only other time we might want to have a different state for right now can be in the key pressed. So we can copy this if statement and then if the game state is running, then do this. And then if the key is equal to escape, then we want to go game and then change game state to paused. And this will make it go to the paused game state. Now we need to be able to change it back. So let's go here and say else if game.state.paused and then we can just copy this so we get the same key input and this can change it back to running. So one of the things I left for homework in a previous video was to implement a paused state for the game. And I told you it would be really easy to do so. And right now we have implemented a paused state for this game. So if you were part of the previous tutorial, then now you should understand how to do that if you didn't do your homework. So yeah, this is how you would implement a post state. It's incredibly simple. Now, if we were to run this, we can go like this. And if you say pause by pressing escape, then the player doesn't do anything. And once we unescape, the player will continue. And then like this, and later on, we can add like some paused text, but for right now it's fine. And yeah, that is all I wanted to do for this tutorial. I just wanted to implement the game state because the game state will allow us to manage so many things inside of this game and it will just help keep the code clean. And in this scenario, it also allowed us to almost immediately implement a pause feature into our game. And yeah, that is all for today's tutorial. I hope you all enjoyed and if you enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe and I will see you all again in the next Love2D tutorial.